Welcome to this video lecture on design of steel structure using limit state method. The limit state method of design philosophy has been introduced in Indian code in the year 2007. Prior to that, we used to follow the principle of working stress design method for the design of steel structure. After 2007, the code has been revised as per the limit state design and we used to follow that. So, the lectures whatever I will be going to deliver that will be based on the limit state design method only. Now, the limit state design method requires structure to satisfy two principal criteria. One is the ultimate limit state, another is the serviceivity limit state and by the limit state method it is possible to design a steel member in a cost effective way without compromising its strength. Nowadays, the skyscrapers are mostly uh, built up with the steel or steel concrete composite. Many buildings, bridges, towers in abroad as well as in our country are made of steel. Here certain some examples we have shown like structural steel are widely used in making transmission tower, industrial building different type of industrial buildings are made of steel intensive uh, material. Then bridges, bridges both the ROB railway over bridges and the general bridges. Then storage structures, different type of storage structures also are made of steel, uh, steel water tanks and many other type of structures like railways, platforms, uh, airport other different type of structures are made of steel and nowadays the skyscrapers what we are going to make mainly are used by the steel and certain amount of concrete of course are used. However, steel are majorly used for those type of skyscrapers. Now, coming to the anatomy of a steel building first we have uh, we know that for an RC structure the anatomy of a building is basically beams, columns, floors and foundation. These are the basic member for an RC buildings RC members RC structures. However, for steel structures apart from these members we will come across the tension member along with that bracing system, base plate, connections, gusset plate, lug angle like different type of uh, members will come into picture. So, why do we need tension member? Here in this figure if you see uh, basically steel are lightweight material with respect to concrete. So, its self weight is comparatively less and when an horizontal load or lateral load is acting on a steel structure, then some of the vertical members will undergo compression and some portion will undergo tension. So, in this case it will be compression and this member will be in tension. So, for such type of steel member, we need to know how to design this member under axial tension. So, we will cover in this lecture the design of steel tension member. Also, here we can see some other anatomy of the uh, structural system is called bracing. Here x bracing is used. This is called bracing. Bracings are generally used to restrict the horizontal deflection under the load. So, to restrict horizontal deflection or to reduce the horizontal deflection, one can provide bracing. Not only for that, also we provide bracing to restrict the local buckling of the member. The member may buckle locally because steel members are light and uh, materials uh, given are less uh, unlike uh, concrete member. Therefore, there will be chance of local buckling. So, to restrict those local buckling, we need to reduce the cylindrical ratio of the entire structure and that is possible by the uh, insertion of bracing system. Now, another term which uh, 
will come across is called base plate. Base plate is basically used to transfer the load from the steel column to the concrete pedestal by the use of certain plate which is called base plate. And this base plate may uh, undergoes concentric load or it may go eccentric load. So, according to that base plate has to be also designed. Another important aspect we need to know in case of steel design is the connection. Unlike RCC member, uh, we have seen in case of RCC member the beam and column or beam and beam, beam and slabs are connected monolithically, but here members are prefabricated. Therefore, members need to be joined. So, members when we are going to join, we need to join through some connections and that connections may be possible by the use of bolting, riveting or welding. And uh, we sometimes do not want monolithic connections, sometimes we want certain hinge type of connections. As per the requirement, uh, we may go for hinge connection, because sometimes in some places we do not want uh, moment to be developed. So, to restrict that we go for hinge connection. So, those things are possible by proper use of the connection to between two materials. So, this is an important part and because of connections we have seen many members many uh, structural system fails and uh, because we do not generally give much importance to the connection which needs uh, uh, prior in importance for that and therefore, we have to also know in details about the connection. Now, coming to syllabus, I uh, will go through the syllabus which I will tentatively plan to cover. In first module, it will be an introductory type lecture, where the advantages of uh, steel and disadvantages of steel material will be discussed. And from that, we can understand that uh, how uh, how wisely one can use the steel as a building material, because if we know properly the disadvantages of the steel material, then we can find out how to use the steel material in building or in any structural system. Then we will go to type of section, what are the type of sections are available that we will discuss then IS roll section, the Indian standard sections are there uh, in roll section, uh, their properties, how the properties are selected, uh, how the properties are calculated, those things will be discussed. And we also discuss material overview, the steel material, uh, its chemical composition and uh, different perspective, we will see what is the stress strain behavior of the material those things we will see, then we will come to the basis for structural design, which is the limited design method. So, we will cover the limited design method, what is the principle of limited design, how uh, we are going to consider the criteria from ultimate uh, limit state and from the submissibility limit state. And be, uh, based on those, how the design criteria has been evolved, those things will be discussed in this. Then we will come to load and load combination. Uh, in fact, in case of steel structure different type of loads comes into picture and different type of load combination has to be considered. Load means not only dead load live load, but also the wind load, seismic load, uh, snow load, then uh, temperature load different type of load will come into picture. So, those aspects also will be gone through. In module 2 we will discuss about the connections and we have different connections we will come across one of them is the bolted connections. We will see what are the advantages of and disadvantages of bolted joints and then how to design the bolted connections uh, for different type of member uh, meeting uh, at a joint. Then how to find out the efficiency of the joint that also we will see and we will design the joint accordingly to get the maximum efficiency. Then we will come to welded connections and we will see what are the advantages 
and disadvantages of the welded connections. Then how to design the weld connection? Uh, weld connections are again two type one is fillet weld another is butt weld for so for for both the cases how the design criteria has been evolved those things will be discussed here and then we will come to plug weld and slot weld in a particular case sometimes when the length of the weld is not sufficient in the member then we may have to go for plug weld or slot weld so where uh, the plug weld and slot weld are required that will be discussed along with the design criteria of the plug weld and slot weld. Means, what are the design criteria, how the uh, plug length and its width are decided, what are the spacing of the plug or slot, those things will be discussed in details in this module. Then we will come to module 3, where we will discuss about the eccentric connection. Indeed, in module 2 we have we will discuss only the concentric connection. So, in eccentric connections different type of eccentricity may come into picture and that is one is when load is lying in the plane of joint and when load is lying perpendicular to the plane of joint. So, for both the case the design criteria will be discussed and for both the cases it will be done through bolted connections as well as welded connections. So, we will cover these also and then we will design the eccentric connection using bolt and weld that how to start the design those things will be also covered in this module. Then coming to module 4, module 4 consists of tension member. Now, in tension member uh, first we will discuss about the types of failure means the tension member how it fails, what are the types of failure and then we will discuss the gross area, we will calculate the gross area and net sectional area of the tension member for which the strength will be decided. Then the rupture of the critical section uh, through which it may fail, so that also will be uh, discussed. Then we will calculate the strength for different criteria like block shear failure and yielding of the gross area, rupture of the net area all those things will be discussed. Then the cylinderness ratio also one factor which will be calculated and we will see what is the limiting cylinderness ratio for the tension member for different type of load case and then we will design the tension member. Design the tension member will be based on the failure criteria and those things will be done through some iteration. Iteration means uh, first we will consider certain uh, member and then we will check for each type of failure and we will see whether the design means the uh, considered section is ok or not. Then in the tension member also we will discuss the gusset plate, lug angle and tension splices. These are few other aspects which will be discussed in this module. Module 5 will consist of the compression member where the types of failure will be discussed and the strength calculation will be based on the type of failure and the strength calculation also will be based on the cylinderness ratio. So, we will calculate the cylinderness ratio based on the effective length of the member and the uh, radius of gyration of the member. Then, uh, we will go to the design of compression member. So, that we will cover also we will cover the built up compression member means when the roll sections are not sufficient to withstand that much load then we have to go for built up compression member. So, for that we will see uh, how to design a built up compression member to withstand that much compressive load. Then we will go to design of lacing system and design of batten system. So, in case of built up member we need to tie the members together with some lacing or batten system. So, what will be the criteria for design of lacing system and batten system those aspects also will be discussed in this module.
then we will come to module 6 where the flexural members will be discussed. So, here we will discuss about the design criteria of beam, then uh, design of beam will be done based on laterally supported and laterally unsupported. In fact, for laterally unsupported beam the uh, torsional buckling will come into picture. So, torsional moment uh, lateral torsional buckling moment will act and because of that the design bending compressive stress of the laterally unsupported beam will be reduced drastically. Therefore, the size of the beam will be required more as th the beam is laterally unsupported. So, how to develop those criteria that will be discussed in this module and also we will discuss the built up member when the uh, roll sections are not sufficient to stand the load then we generally go for built up beams and then we will go for design of purlin, purlin is basically uh, the um, um, purlin is basically withstand biaxial moment and because of that biaxial moment we have to check the interaction formula whether that is the purlin can, um, uh, can withstand that much load or not. Then we will come to the gantry girder, again in gantry girder we will see that both the vertical and lateral load will come into picture and as a result the gantry girder is an example of biaxial building. So, how to design the gantry girder under biaxial bending that also will be discussed in this module. And in gantry girder certain coral aspects are there for calculating the load accidental load and other things. So, those things also will be discussed in this module the design criteria of gantry girder and what is the load position for which the maximum effect on the gantry girder will be occur will be occurring that will be seen and for the um, that load case what will be the maximum bending moment and shear force uh, under which we have to design those aspects will be looked into. And the last module will consist of column base the load from the superstructure are transferred to the ground through the column base and column base basically two type of column base will be discussed one is slab base another is gusset base. Slab base uh, generally take concentric load and for light load we generally use slab base and when the load is heavy or eccentric in nature generally we go for gusset base. Also we will discuss about the base place in this module, uh, base plate is basically uh, the plate which transfer the load from column to the concrete pedestal. So, how to design the base plate under concentric load or under eccentric load or under both that also will be discussed in this module. Now, coming to the textbook. So, here you see I have uh, given two textbook. I refer two textbook. One is design of steel structure, Dr. Subramaniam Narayan. Uh, it is published by Oxford, and another is limited design of steel structure by S. K. Duggal, published by Tata Mirgrahil. Apart from these two books, there are several books available in the market. But my personal opinion is, uh, you can follow this either of these two books, which are very nicely and exhaustively written. So, I will prefer that you follow either of these two books. Now, some reference book also you can follow for further reading like design of uh, steel structure by Elias G. Abu Shaba, which is published by CBS publishers right this can be followed. Another book is Design of Steel Structure by E. H. Gellor and C. N. Gellor and J. E. Stelmier. This is published by McGraw-Hill. Another good book you can refer for your further study that is Structural Steel Work Analysis and Design by S. S. Ray. Blackwell Science has published this book. So, either of this book also you may refer for further study. Now, coming to code, 
So, in IS 800 2007, the design philosophy based on limit state method has been discussed. The design criteria of the limit state method are spelled out in this IS 800 2007. While going through these lectures, I would recommend sitting with this code, you will find numerous expression giving in the code for finding the design strength of a particular member. You may not need to remember all these equations or numerical values of the various coefficients, but you need to know where does it available in the code, so that while solving a problem you can refer to that particular clause. So, apart from this IS 800 2007, few other codes are required for design of steel structure. One is the handbook of structural engineers that is SP 6. SP 6 1 1964, which is reaffirmed in 2003, where you can find out the properties of steel roll section. So, in SP 6 1, you can find out. Also, you can refer IS 808 1989, which is reaffirmed in 2004. And also, you can refer steel tables of any standard publication where the properties of steel roll sections are available, because day by day different type of steel roll sections are uh, created. So, their properties are tabulated in different steel tables. So, those things also can be referred. And then uh, we can refer other code like uh, code of practice for design loads other than earthquake that is IS 875 part 1 to part 4, part 5 1987. So, here in part 1 you will see the dead load, part 2 you will see the live load, part 3 you will see the wind load like this you will in different part you will get different type of load and load combinations also you will get in this IS 875. So, uh, we need to refer IS 875 uh, of different part uh, frequently for calculation of the load and the load combination to design the steel structure. Apart from this IS 1893 2002 for seismic design is also required. For design of steel structure under seismic excitation, we need to refer IS 1893 2002, which also will be required. Another code is required for bridge structures that is IRC for vehicle load, because in bridge structures different type of vehicles with different capacity will move. So, for that what will be the load and uh, what will be the load specification that is given in IRC. So, we need to refer to that for design of bridge like structures. Now, different rolled steel sections are available in our country, uh, few of them I have cited here like one is Indian standard junior beam ISJB or in short we can write JB, then Indian standard light beam or LB, similarly Indian standard medium weight beam ISMB or MB, Indian standard white flange beam ISWB. Indian standard heavy weight beam ISHB, similarly Indian standard column section ISSC. So, these are few rolled sections available in the market which may be useful for design of steel members. So, now I will show one I section uh, that is steel rolled section. Say for example, this is an I section having depth of D. Now, in SP 6, if you refer, you will get different type of I sections are given, like say for example, I S M B say 400. That means, when I am referring I S M B 400, that means, the overall depth of the section is 400 that means, D will be is equal to 400 and corresponding other properties uh, 
the geometrical properties are given in SP6. Like in case of ISMB 400, in the table you will get the width of the flange. This is called either we can we can say B capital B or in general we can we say B F width of the flange. Similarly, the thickness of the wave is termed as T or T W thickness of the wave. Thickness of the flange is considered at this point. This point means at a B minus T by 4. That means, if this is B and if this is T, then B minus T by 4 at that distance whatever width will be that width will be referred as thickness of flange capital T or we write T f. In my lecture, I will follow this B f, T w, T f and D. Sometimes uh, in book you will see it is referred as H height of the member section. Okay. And here you see the flange thickness are varying from toe to root flange thickness are varying. So, the thickness of flange when we are going to refer we will refer at this point that is B minus T by 4 though it will vary and it has standard dimension and here this radius is called root radius R 1 root radius that radius is also given in the SP 6 then this is called toe radius R 2. So, these are all standard for a particular section. Then this is flange slope alpha and also we will see at a particular distance there will be a hole for bolt which is called gauge distance. This is called gauge distance. So, this will be there. That means, if I refer to ISMB 400 then I can find out the subsequent properties of ISMB 400 from the SP6 in its table. Not only the geometrical properties like thickness, width and depth, also I will find out the moment of inertia about x x x and in new code uh, we used to follow as z z direction in place of x x it is told z z. So, we can say i z z, we can find out i y y. So, all values are given. Then the section modulus, section modulus means elastic section modulus z e, z e y, z e z. Similarly, the plastic section modulus z p z also can be found, z p z and z p y. That z p z can be found in IS 800 2007 you will not get in uh, SP6, because SP6 was developed much earlier after 2007 it is not been um, revised. So, in IS 800 2007, IS 800 2007 you will find out the plastic section modulus of the section like Z P Z. Apart from this also you can find out the radius of gyration about y axis, about z axis and like all the details properties are readily available in this code. So, when we are going to design considering such uh, role section, we can automatically find out all the properties and then we can go for the design. this is a channel section. Here the name are done like this like Indian standard junior channel ISJC, similarly Indian standard light channel ISLC, Indian standard medium weight channel ISMC, generally um, we use ISMC frequently, Indian standard parallel uh, plane channel ISMCP or MCP like this. Here also when I am talking about say ISMC 350 that means the 
depth of the means overall depth of the section is 350. So, d is 350 and corresponding values of uh, other properties like width of the flange, thickness of the flange, width of the wave all are specified in the SP6. So, corresponding to ISMC 350 we can find out the other relevant properties from the code. Here also you see that R 1 is the root radius uh, which, is, which can be found, R 2 is the toe radius. Similarly, we can find out uh, what is the E y eccentricity along this direction. Then the thickness of the flange that will be at B minus T by 2 and this is the thickness of the wave that is T w. And here one thing I forgot to mention in case of I section also that sometimes you need to calculate the effective depth d. So, effective depth d will be basically the overall depth minus 2 into thickness of flange minus 2 into root radius r 1. So, effective depth of the section will be this d minus 2 t f minus 2 r 1. Now, we will come to the angle section. So, here different type of angle sections we we have come across uh, that is told say one is ISA means Indian standard equal angle ISA say if I give name like this 90 by 90 by 6 when I am telling ISA 90 by 90 by 6 that means the uh, arm length or side of the angle will be 90 90 and thickness will be 6. Similarly, when Indian standard unequal angles are referred then it is it will be referred like this say ISA 90 by 60 by say 6. So, it means the length of the longer arm will be 90, length of the shorter arm will be 60 and thickness in case in every case thickness of both the arm is same so that is 6 mm. So, this is how we define and here also we find out the relevant properties from the table say for example, uh, here you can see the when I am talking about ISA say 60 by 40 by say 4 that means, I can refer to that section in the code and then I can find out its values. Values means what will be the I x x, what will be I y y, what will be C x, C y, R x x, R y y then also I can find out the moment of inertia about principal axis, major principal axis and minor principal axis I u u and I v v. Similarly, I can find out R u u and R v v right. So, all the relevant properties can be found from the table. Now, another section which also is used in steel building that is T section. Uh, T sections are named like this Indian standard normal T bars ISNT similarly ISDT, ISLT, ISMT uh, then ISHT like this. Here also the total length is defined as h or sometimes we call d then the thickness uh, sorry width of the flange is called b f like this all terms are given in the sp6 you can refer to that i am not going into details then another um, rolled steel sections are available, available which is called indian standard round section ISRO. So, Indian standard round section means uh, the se cross section will be circular uh, 
and uh, it will be defined like this say I s R O 100, 100 means its diameter will be 100 mm. So, when I am talking I s R O 100 that means it is a Indian standard round section of 100 mm diameter right. Similarly, Indian standard square section I s S Q. So, for example, I s S Q 50 means a square section each side of which is 50 mm that means this will be 50 this will be 50. So, such type of rolled steel bar are also available. Then rolled steel sheet or strip. So, this is named as Indian standard uh, steel sheet section ISSH or simply SH. Similarly, Indian standard steel strip section ISST or ST. So, when rolled steel flats are designated by width of the section in millimeter followed by the letter F and thickness. That means, when we are designating a rolled steel flat as 50 F 8, it means it is a flat of width 50 mm and thickness 8 mm. So, the sti rolled steel flat when we are designating we need to designate in this way that 50 F 8 that means the flat of width 50 mm and thickness 8 mm. Apart from that we have also square hollow section say sometimes we provide hollow section square hollow section right with certain thickness. So, that also as a for column section generally we uh, use such type of six, uh, square hole section or some other cases also we use another is rectangular hollow section that means the cross section will be rectangular and it should be hollow with certain thickness rectangular hollow section. Then hollow section pipe and tubular section right. So, such type of uh, rolled steel sections are available. So, this is all about the today's lecture. Next day we shall discuss about the uh, steel material properties and what is the chemical composition of the steel those aspects will be di discussed. Then we will discuss how the steel behaves under load. Uh, means what will be the stress strain curve of the steel and how the steel properties are going to vary with the presence of carbon, presence of percentage of carbon those aspects will be very uh, shortly will be discussed. Thank you very much.